She was a high-energy, unexercised dog, a stressed dog in agony, a dominant dog that didn't know how to act around other dogs. And still, if she would have attacked someone, people would blame the breed for it and not the damn owner, you know, it's insane. What's up guys, thank you for stopping by. My name is Philip, this is the Whining Molly, she's an American Staffordshire Terrier. This is Wilde, she's a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And I'm a human. And we've been watching some videos and scrolling down the comments. Maybe we shouldn't have done that. But anyway, I noticed that there is plenty of talk about which breed is the most difficult breed to train. You know, which breed is nearly impossible to handle. And I see comments like, oh, I know, it's a dog Argentino. They are huge with such a prey drive. And did you know they kill bulls for sport? <laughs> and I see a reply to that comment like, nah, man, it's the Malinois. I mean, it's the most high energy dog there is. And they are specifically bred for professionals. And... <laughs> Why I'm laughing is I can just see how every single person in the world can find an argument if they want to of why a specific breed is the most difficult one. Now look, I'm here to tell you which dog that is the most difficult or harder to train, not which breed because actually there is no such thing as the most difficult breed. And now this ain't the topic for this type of video, but I'm gonna tell you real quick that genetics, pedigrees, breeds do matter. I mean, for sure, a hundred percent. It's really important for the dog owner to know what he or she is holding in the leash. You know, some dogs are bred to have a high prey drive, you know, an instinct to chase after animals and trails. Some dogs are bred to be a working dog with high energy. Some has low energy and maybe not that good of a working dog. Some are even bred to pull you on a damn sled 500 miles. You know, some breeds would actually die if they ever tried to do that. But all these traits that I just mentioned, you know, having high energy, having low energy, having the instinct to chase after animals and trails, pulling you on a sled, all these traits can vary in the same breed. Even though this breed ain't specifically bred to have all these traits, they can still have them. And if you have a dog, you know, they have different personalities and upbringings. And even though they are the same breed, they can be quite different. So this is why you can't vastly generalize which breed is the most difficult. And by the way, I just want to point this out and be very clear that there's no dog or breed in the world that is difficult or hard to train if you know what you're doing. But that's the thing, if you know what you're doing. But still, why I choose to use the word difficult or the most hardest dog to train handle is because of the average person because even though you're the best goddamn dog trainer out there in the world if you would train this type of dogs that i'm about to talk about it would still require a lot of time and effort and imagine then for the average person who maybe do not have all this experience you know it will be quite hard or not even quite hard it will be very difficult for them so i really hope these type of videos and the follow-up video that I'm about to make will actually or hopefully help at least some of you guys you know help you help your dogs basically so if you haven't done that I would appreciate and I hope that you will too if you press that subscribe button press the notification bell and we can solve your potential problems with your dog anyway as I was saying genetics are very important it's crucial for the dog owner to know what he or she is holding in the leash but the most difficult dog to train or to handle isn't a breed with a set of traits. So I'm gonna release this dog quite real quick. They have been sitting or laying down here for a long time. So I'm gonna release them and then cut to the chase. Molly here is one of these dogs that I'm talking about. And again, she wasn't a difficult dog because of her breed or because of her traits, you know. There's nothing wrong with her breed or the traits that she has. It's just those things combined with a shitty upbringing that greatly enhanced her traits which made her you know a difficult dog and that's only because it takes more time to retrain a dog than it takes to train a dog but before i go into details about her background i want to talk a little bit more about her traits and then wrap it all up with her upbringing so you know it will be a full circle explanation of why dogs like this are a little bit more difficult to train or to handle for the average person I'm just gonna go up here so I can find the same spot that I was sitting at before. How did you get off that fence? All right, so I'm gonna start talking about her traits real quick. You wanna sit that way? Well, she wanna look at the view, okay. So yeah. number one, she's a very dominant dog. It's just in her nature. It's in her nature to be a leader and to correct other dogs. But you know, 
A dog being dominant is not hard or difficult to train. If you know dogs, you know that they will need to be socialized, especially our dominant dogs, so they won't just go dominating every dog that they see for no reason. You know, a dominant dog should be confident enough that they don't have to do that. Whether your dog is dominant or not, they will need to be socialized. You know, so uh, a fray dog won't just be biting dogs out of fear or a dominant dog will, won't be overly dominant and go dominating every people. Basically, every dog need to be socialized. That's it. All right, so my battery died and I had to change location real quick. But anyway, back to what I was saying. She's a very dominant dog. That would be trait number one. Trait number two would be she's a high, high energy dog. And once again, that's just how she is. But a high energy dog is not hard or difficult to train either. Same thing as a dominant dog, it's not difficult. A dominant dog and actually every single dog that is out there in the world, they need to be socialized. And a high energy dog, they need to be exercised to you know, function properly. They need to use their brain, their body, they need to work. Because energy for a dog can easily be converted to stress and at some point they might not know what they are doing you know they might will be flying all over the place and that energy and stress could be converted to you know the dog biting or an attack so it can be quite hard for us humans to wrap around that but just understand that uncontrolled energy is bad <laughs> very very bad and I did a video about that actually talking and actually showing you when I'm training obedience training with Molly uncontrolled energy versus controlled energy and you can actually see the result that I'm getting how different it is when she's you know when she's having a controlled energy and an uncontrolled energy so I'm gonna put that video in the description below so you can click on that if you want to and you can actually see and understand what I'm talking about so anyway back to uncontrolled energy being converted to stress being potentially converted into an attack even though your dog is the most kind and all loving dog there is they could still you know bite even though that's not the intention of your dog so it's quite important for us to know that just because a dog bites or you know touches you with the teeth it's not always intentional because energy and stress can be so deceitful now imagine a dog that has all these traits, you know, a very dominant dog, a high energy dog, a strong and athletic dog. Now imagine that this dog is raised for seven to eight months or longer by a complete fool. This dog that required a little more attention and more exercise than, you know, a normal dog did get little to no exercise. This high energy dominant dog that is now stressed have never met a dog before or a person, I mean ever. This dog that needed to be exercised and socialized have during these months been taught nothing. Have you ever heard about dog training saying that dogs doesn't think, they react? Well, that's what she did during these months. She didn't think, she just reacted. Imagine all this bad behavior that is printed into her mind. All this bad behavior really got stuck in her head. You know, as soon as she saw a dog, she react. As soon as she got stressed, she react. <laughs> as soon as she breathes, she react. When you then take over that ownership, you're now holding in the leash the hardest or the most difficult dog to train or to handle. And that was Molly when I first took care of her. As I said, she's a dominant dog. It's just in her nature to be the leader and to correct other dogs. But she had no socializing skills at all. Basically never seen a dog or a person. So it's gonna be quite fucking tense when she's meeting another dog. You know, she don't know the proper way to act around other dogs, which will just lead to, you know, miscommunications, fights and everything like that. Plus of the fact that she's an energetic dog that never got to be exercised. You know, as I said before, just that is just a recipe for disaster. She was so stressed and unfocused when I got her and everything was just a mess. And she never positivity trained in her life, I mean at all, which is like the most important thing that you can teach a dog. I mean ever, the most important thing that you can teach a dog, positivity trained, because it doesn't only teach your dog to, you know, sit still or lay down and watch other things, it teaches them to 
you know, control their energy, to control their desires, how to restrain themselves, how to be calm. You know, just because there's another dog over there doesn't mean I'm gonna go there. And oh, there's a person passing through, who cares, you know, it's just so important. And I forgot to mention that she had a broken tail in two places, which is why, by the way, it's removed. So it's not docked in the sense that I did it for beauty reasons. She was in agony for seven months, which is, you know, just only that was very stressful for her, you know, in that kind of an environment. It's just a damn miracle that she's not just broken mentally now when I think of it. So, as I said earlier, no dog is difficult if you know what you're doing. But Molly, in the hand of a person with no experience, could actually be quite dangerous. You know, she was a high energy, unexercised dog, a stressed dog in agony, a dominant dog that didn't know how to act around other dogs. And still, if she would have attacked someone, people would blame the breed for it and not the damn owner, you know, it's insane. If I wasn't clear, by the way, why it's harder to train these type of dogs than it is to train a puppy, it's because the first experience your dog has gets stuck into their mind and into their behavior. You know, so obviously you can retrain any dog with ease, but it's way harder and takes more time and effort to retrain a dog than it takes to train a dog. So I'm gonna make another video after this one, you know, a follow-up video in which I go into details about the most important things that you can teach a dog. Basically, how I got down Molly to a manageable level. So if you're having problems with your dog, or actually, if you just want a decent, happy, obedient and calm dog, Consider clicking on that subscribe button, press on that notification bell so you won't miss it and I will do my best to go into exact detail of you know what I did and how you can help your dog to be better and how to feel better.